The Emotional Color Wheel is a book that I use um, as a reference for my students so that they start to understand that colors and shapes can be used to express emotional values. The book starts off with um, our basic shapes, like the triangle, circle, and square. So triangles tend to be the most aggressive shapes because they remind us of knives, broken glass, scissors, a spear. So if you want to describe something that is scary, frightening, dangerous, or hurtful, or even painful, a triangle is a symbol that we can use. Circles, on the other hand, tend to be more playful. They remind us of a bubble, a balloon, a hula hoop, or a frisbee. So if you want to describe something that is fun, playful, soft, safe, um, then these are uh, good shapes to be using. Squares uh, are used in construction. You think of bricks, you think of stairs, desks, shelves. They're strong, they're stable, they're dependable, and they might even be a little bit boring. Um, and those same words can be used to describe people. So when I think about the shapes and how they express things, I could create a shape like this for myself. So I feel like I'm a fun and playful sort of person with a sense of humor, but as a teacher I need to be dependable and so that my grades are based on some kind of information from my students and what they've done. I'm not just giving them a grade because, oh, they're, they're dressed nice today or something like that. So this was my combination shape to kind of represent me. Of course we go into color and um, we talk about how stop signs all around the world are red and why is that? It's not just an arbitrary color, it's not by accident. Well, red is the color of blood. So red is going to be something that is used for high alert something that's scary, frightening, dangerous, hurtful, or even painful. Um, every culture in the world has this association with blood, so we know that red is our most aggressive color. So if you want to show that something is aggressive and dangerous, red is a good color to use. Orange is associated with a hot burner or hot coals, um, so they're very useful. You can cook on those coals, but you could also burn yourself as well. So it's a color that grabs attention, it's full of energy, can sometimes be dangerous if you're not careful around it. It's also a very active color. Yellow is associated internationally with the sun. So it's a color of warmth, it's a color of happiness, uh, it's friendly, it's life-giving. Um, so if you want to show that somebody has those kinds of qualities, yellow is a good color to use. Green is associated with growth and vegetables and trees and grass. So it's a color that shows that somebody is growing, uh, somebody is helping or nurturing. Um, it can be a color that would be relaxing, happy, positive, uh, and calm. Uh, it's not as active as yellow, but it's certainly positive. Blue is even calmer still. So we have things like the sky or oceans, lakes. Um, and sometimes when we think about things like the ocean or the sky, it's very vast, it's very deep. It kind of goes on so far that you, you almost can't consider how big it really is. So it's a good color for somebody who has a lot of depth. It's very calm, it's relaxing, it's friendly, it's kind of understanding, uh, it's quiet, and tends to be positive, um, like a happy sort of a, a feeling goes along with that color. It's also important to remember that you know life cannot live without water, so it's a quenching uh, and nurturing kind of color as well. Purple is associated with sunsets, royalty, the deep parts of the ocean. Um, so it's very, very calm, very still, very dependable, um, but it's also very, very quiet, uh, almost sleepy. So if you wanted to describe somebody that was calm, quiet, deep, still, and peaceful, purple would be a good color. Obviously, there are many more other colors to kind of consider, so some of the important ones we cover are black, um, for the unknown and mystery because it reminds us of a dark cave or a dark forest or charcoal. Um, so it's not a bad color, but it tends to be a color of mystery or the unknown. When you don't understand what's going on or somebody's kind of keeping secrets from you, black can be a good color. White uh, is often seen in cultures as the color of ghosts, so it's a spirituality sort of color. Um, it's light, uh, it's cool, it's clean, um, might even be considered a bit cold. So uh, white can also be a color for newness, like a baby. Um, and again, like I said, spirituality. Uh, white would be a good color to use. 
Gray is very strong like stone, but also very cold and lifeless. It's also a color of indecision, so it's a good color to use when you're not quite sure where to go, you don't know what to do. Gray might describe that well. Brown is an important color. It's the color of the earth and ground, so when the um, farmers plow the fields, there's a lot of potential. You can plant seeds and things can grow. Uh, it's the color of hard work, leather, seeds, bark. So if you want to show that somebody is um, very hardworking um, or has lots of ideas, then brown might be the good color for that. Gold is a color for royalty and riches uh, and achievement. Silver is the color of metal. Um, it's also a good color to represent technology. Um, it is cold, but it's very, very strong. If you wanted to describe someone in those ways, uh, silver would be a good color to use. And then when I took my shape and colored it in, this is supposed to look a little bit more brown, but it came out orange. Um, so the brown was supposed to represent that I'm a hardworking person. I'm a teacher. I also write books and uh, publish and run a small gallery. So the hardworking part of me uh, is represented by brown. Yellow, because I tend to be positive, um, happy. The blue polka dots represent my sense of humor. It's kind of a quiet sense of humor. Um, but sometimes my sense of humor gets a little bit more bubbly, so I used yellow polka dots inside the blue, which represents calm. As a teacher, I help my students grow, so I have a lot of green in there. And then again, the shape is the same as I had before. So based on this information in the book um, and the colors and shapes and how they express emotions, you can do abstract works of art like this, which is representing a family. Each shape represents a family member and the color between the shapes represent how they feel about each other. You could also do a self-portrait uh, in this way, like this student. Um, he did a self-portrait where we've got the profile down the middle. Inside represents how he feels about himself. Outside is how he views the outside world. There are many, many different ways of applying the information uh, from the emotional color wheel. And I hope you'll explore that and do some abstract work with your own students.